Good afternoon. I'm Tony Sandcamp. I am the president and owner of Sandcamp Woodworks LLC. We're a small architectural millwork and cabinetry manufacturer located in Jersey City. Uh, we're also members of the New Jersey Main Street Alliance, which is a chapter of a national group of approximately 30,000 small business owners. I'm happy to say that 2021 was Sandcamp Woodworks' 30th year in operation. I've been offering a company health care plan for my employees since the year 2008. In the last 13 years, we've struggled to keep that plan in place as its cost has become a factor. In my discussion with other small business owners, they're all trying to grapple with the same issue. Or they just say that they can't offer the benefit. This puts small and micro-sized businesses at a competitive disadvantage. My employees who pay 50% of the plan cost always know that in November when our plan renews that they will be presented with higher premium costs. Their question is, where will it all end? When my cabinet shop starts an installation, my employee sets a, a level line on, on the wall in a room. From that point on, going forward, all work will relate back to that benchmark on the wall. In the same sense, all benchmarks establish a reference point. For our effort in healthcare, the distance measured by that benchmark will affect the lives of all of us. And just like my small business, quality cannot be sacrificed. As a small business owner, in touch with the challenges that we all face, I have been honored to add my voice to the administration's effort to establish greater health care affordability and transparency. I believe that the steps that we are taking will make a difference not only for the businesses of New Jersey, but for all those who live and work in our great state. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce the governor of the great state of New Jersey, Mr. Phil Murphy. Thank you, Tony. Good afternoon, everyone. Honored to be here. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Tony, for everything you do uh, as a leading small businessman and also specifically to the reason why we're here today. You've been a huge force for the good here. I want to recognize uh, some of whom are here, and I frankly can't see beyond the lights to see if they're all here, but I want to recognize uh, beyond Tony several other incredible partners in our work to make New Jersey stronger and fairer. Uh, commissioner on the stage with me to my left, the Commissioner of the Department of Banking and Insurance, Marlene Curide. Marlene, thank you for everything you do. Uh, to her diagonal left in the front, uh, the Director Shabnan Salim of the Office of Healthcare Affordability and Transparency. And Shabnam, you've done an extraordinary job uh, to get us to today, and I know you will continue to show that leadership. Um, our, and by the way, our interagency working group uh, includes, and I'm not sure if they're here, but uh, Commissioners Judy Persichelli, uh, Acting Commissioner Sarah Edelman, Treasurer Liz Moyo, and Acting Director of Division of Consumer Affairs, Sean Neefsey. I also want to give Kathy Bennett, too, to my left, uh, the New Jersey Hospital Association President and CEO, a shout out, we'll hear from her. Ward Sanders to my far left, the New Jersey Association of Health Plans President, uh, and to all the distinguished folks who are with us today. We're not here to talk about COVID, but uh, just to make sure we don't ever lose track of it, 6,840 positive cases today with the heaviest of hearts, 34 deaths confirmed, 2,034 in our hospitals, 272 of whom went in yesterday, and 166, uh, thankfully, who, who left. So again, I want to thank all of you for being here and for your commitment to making New Jersey a place where more of our residents have more affordable access to quality health care at our world-class institutions and with our tremendous partners. This holiday season, as we gather together, safely and hopefully fully vaccinated and boosted, families across New Jersey will be celebrating so many of the traditions 
that we missed out on last year. At the same time, we know that many families will be feeling the absence of a loved one, and our hearts go out to you. Likewise, any family in mourning or who currently has a loved one fighting an illness may also be coping with the terrible stress of finding a way to keep up with their health care costs. To these families and every New Jersey family, we are committed to doing more than sending our love and support and prayers. We are committed to ensuring that New Jersey is a place where every resident has access to the health care they need. Over the past nearly two years, the COVID-19 pandemic has underscored the importance of our continued work to lower the cost of health care. And as we continue to work through every challenge the pandemic throws our way, we recognize that affordable quality health care is an essential part of our recovery. Further, making New Jersey stronger and fairer and a more affordable place to call home for our residents and businesses means working to address the cost of high health care prices. We know that health care access can often begin and end with simply being able to afford it. While we have successfully implemented many new policies to address consumer affordability and access over the past four years, we know that health care costs have grown faster than the economy for decades and continue to rise. Increasing costs are burdening New Jersey families, businesses, as Tony rightfully said, and the state, resulting in decreased funding for other critical priorities, including education and housing. The economists call that phenomenon crowding out because health care is taking up so much of our wallet at both the family level, the business level, the state level, there's left there's less left over to address some of our other uh, needs, like education and housing in the state's case. And despite the very real progress we have made and we have made, we know that there is more critical work to be done. Understanding the drivers of these unsustainable price increases is the first step toward making the cost of health care transparent and ultimately affordable. I'm therefore thrilled to announce through executive order the development of the Healthcare Cost Growth Benchmark Program doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue, but we know, we know what it's about. Created to give us a better picture of this problem, along with specific goals to curb the rate of cost growth. At its core, the Healthcare Cost Growth Benchmark is a shared goal of bringing down the annual growth rate of healthcare costs. It is based on the firm belief that healthcare spending should not and must not grow faster than the economy or our residents' pocketbooks. In the short term, the benchmark program will provide New Jerseyans with a clear understanding of how much health care costs are growing as well as the factors contributing to its high cost and cost growth. And over time, the benchmark program will move beyond transparency and data gathering to a focus on decreasing the growth of health care costs each year and ultimately make paying for health care more affordable. And Commissioner Caride will be able to speak to this with greater detail. In a successful benchmark program, and Tony alluded to how that works in his shop, quality of care in this case is not sacrificed in the name of savings. We will not ever do that. Rather, we are determined to bring health care providers and payers together to develop innovative and sustainable cost mitigation strategies that also promote quality health outcomes. This level of cooperation and collaboration has been made possible through the leadership and vision of the off Office of Healthcare Affordability led by Shabnam and our incredible partners at the Department of Banking and Insurance led by Marlene. But in addition to those individuals, we have a great many more partners to thank. This work began almost a year ago through executive order establishing the Office of Healthcare Affordability and leading to the interagency working group, which includes, as I mentioned earlier, critical stakeholders such as the Departments of Health, Human Services, Community Affairs, and Treasury, as well as our advisory group, which includes, and some many of them are with us today, representatives from major hospitals, insurance carriers, unions, advocates, employers, and more. I'm incredibly proud and grateful that the advisory group members have signed a stakeholder compact signifying their commitment to reaching the objectives 
outlined today and ensuring that health care in New Jersey is more accessible and affordable. Through this program, we can build robust data collection and infrastructure that will help us measure our performance, analyze the underlying drivers of cost growth, and identify promising policies and strategies to ensure we reach our goals. If we have learned anything over the past two years, it is that our health and being able to affordably access our world-class health care system is essential to the well-being of our communities, our economy, and our way of life. I'm proud and grateful that this work started before the beginning of the pandemic, and I look forward to the continued partnership that will see the benchmark program successfully come to fruition. With that, please help me welcome an incredibly important leader in this program, the Commissioner of the Department of Banking and Insurance, Marlene Caride. Marlene? Good afternoon, and thank you, Governor. Today is an important day for our state. This administration has long made health care access and affordability a key priority. Under the leadership of our governor, we established a reinsurance program and the Health Insurance Market Preservation Act, which combined lower insurance rates 22% than what they would have otherwise have been. Following those programs, we established our own state-based exchange and made available state subsidies that help to lower the cost of health insurance for our residents purchasing coverage right now during the annual open enrollment period. Hundreds of thousands of people enrolling in coverage at Get Covered New Jersey are benefiting from the record levels of financial help available through state subsidies and through the American Rescue Plan. The state took those important actions, but we knew addressing health care affordability could not just be the state lowering insurance costs. In order to truly lower costs for our residents, businesses, and the government, we have to get to the heart of the issue, and that is the cost of health care. Today's announcement is a huge step forward. I am proud of the work that we have done in the past year in coordination with the Office of Health Care Affordability and Transparency under the leadership of Chabon Soleil. I also want to recognize the various stakeholders that have been vital part of this process. Today, we are coming together as an administration with healthcare partners and employers to say that we are all committed to a shared goal to provide relief to residents in our state as they seek the quality care they need and they deserve. Together, we have created a framework for a healthcare cost growth benchmark program this program will promote increased transparency and accountability for healthcare spending and slow the rate of spending growth to make it more affordable and sustainable for families, individuals, employers, and the state. Specifically, the benchmark, the benchmark program sets targets for the rate of healthcare cost growth that the state, hospitals, providers, and carriers will work towards achieving over the next six years. Considering national historical and projected trend rates, the benchmark sets a target for lowering health care cost growth in New Jersey to 3.5% in 2023 and down to 2.8% in 2027. Recognizing the impact of COVID-19 on our health care system providers and that it will take time to change the trajectory of the cost growth, 2022 will serve as a transition year with the start of data collection and reporting. The compact that was announced today, that, it, that is signed by a range of partners, is important. It creates a strong collaborative foundation for all of us to work towards attaining the benchmarks that we have set through data reporting and it represents our commitment to continuing to collaborate to better understand the underlying health care cost drivers in New Jersey and to address them. Over the past four years, the state has taken numerous actions to improve access to health coverage and care for our residents. 
This is the next step forward to improve health care affordability without diminishing the quality for all of our residents. While a tremendous amount of work has gone into today's announcement, the reality is that work is just beginning. I look forward to, the, to continuing to work to help make quality health care more affordable in our state. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene, and thank you for your leadership on this and so many other fronts. I mentioned her earlier um, to say that we've been working closely. Judy Persichelli, I think, is here. I can barely see anybody here, but I see you, Judy. Judy, I think it's fair to say that to say that we've been working closely with Kathy Bennett over the past 22 months would be the understatement of the year. I don't know if Kevin O'Dowd is here. Kevin's, hey, Kevin has done an extraordinary job uh, as the South Region Coordinator. I don't know if the other coordinators are here, but um, we've gotten to know each other really well, and there's been extraordinary leadership by so many folks uh, here today, and I mentioned Kevin um, and his peers. Uh, but Kathy, you've done an extraordinary job, so please help me welcome the President and CEO of the New Jersey Hospital Association, Kathy Bennett. So, in many ways, today's announcement's a fitting end, I think, to 2021. No industry has been more tested these last two years than the one I represent. And unfortunately, we continue to be tested as we see staggering numbers of patients filling our hospitals as we battle yet another surge of COVID. And I've got to say, New Jersey's hospitals believe that nothing, particularly costs, should ever serve as a barrier for our residents to get the health care services they need. We welcome and applaud Governor Murphy's leadership in bringing together a wide group of health care leaders to ensure that New Jersey is a national model of healthcare affordability, quality, and innovation. This would not be possible without the participation and work of many healthcare leaders, but especially those hospital leaders present today. So I'd just like to take a quick moment to acknowledge, in addition to Kevin O'Dowd from Cooper, our former NJHA board chair, Kevin Slavin from St. Joe's Health. We also had the support of John Dahl, um, representing Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas, Kevin Joyce from Atlantic Health, and we also have Dennis Pullen, the President and CEO of Virtua Health, who continues to support an awful lot, particularly with the, meta, uh, sorry, with the meta, mega site down in South Jersey. So all of these efforts collectively represent their commitment of our industry to the health and well-being of New Jerseyans and to make sure that that health and well-being is accessible and affordable. You know, one of the things that we always keep in mind is that NJHA's members are not just providers of health care services. They are also one of the largest group of employers in the state. Our physicians, nurses, patient advocates, technicians, therapists, and all of the other dedicated state staff is going to benefit from this historic agreement. We are proud and grateful for their work in our facilities. These heroes who come to work every day with the skills, compassion, and commitment to build a healthier New Jersey. Today's announcement ensures that together, we will identify the best practices and measures of success for care that is affordable, accessible, and exceptional, because New Jerseyans deserve no less. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, and thank you for acknowledging uh, some of the leadership uh, of hospitals with us. I think we, we brought in, for some reason, Broadway Klieg lights today because I literally, uh, it's very hard to see anything out here. And, and Kathy also makes a point that I want to underscore the extraordinary heroic work by our healthcare workers who are now dealing with yet another wave of this awful virus, uh, have been at it for 22 straight months. Uh, in mostly unrelenting circumstances, and they deserve our constant praise. With that, again, I mentioned him earlier, um, also representing a, a, another important group of partners in this initiative today. Please help me welcome the New Jersey Association of Health Plans President Ward Sanders. Ward, come on down.
Uh, thank you, Governor, and uh, Shabnam for uh, inviting me to participate here today. You know, New Jersey has a long history of trying to increase access and make coverage more affordable. Um, I think about our 1992 uh, reforms from Governor Florio that presaged many of the elements of the uh, ACA. Uh, our efforts uh, in New Jersey to expand Medicaid uh, right off the bat was a huge uh, decision uh, for the state to expand access. Um, and a number of the efforts uh, from your administration, uh, uh, Governor Murphy, uh, that uh, Commissioner Crede talked about, uh, the establishment of a state-based exchange, uh, very successful and, and, and well implemented, the uh, 1332 waiver for a reinsurance mechanism to redeploy federal funding in a way that helps New Jersey consumers uh, afford coverage um, and uh, the uh, protections for consumers related to out-of-network uh, surprise billing. Um, all uh, have uh, helped make uh, coverage more accessible uh, and affordable. Uh, and the fruits of those labors, uh, I don't know if Commissioner didn't mention it, but announced yesterday was the total signups are over 25 percent in the open enrollment period and 60,000 health plan selections compared to this time last year. An, an enormous uh, achievement. That means that people have uh, much greater access to, to health care, and we should acknowledge that. Uh, but there is more to do. Uh, bringing together the many stakeholders in health care for an honest conversation about health care costs and spending is not easy. Um, and uh, getting us all to agree on something like this compact, well, that's, that's pretty extraordinary. So uh, we thank the efforts of the, of the state uh, in this. Um, last year, health care spending in America increased by 9.7 percent to more than $4 trillion on a national level. Um, it's neither acceptable or sustainable. Today, um, this compact, we, uh, with this compact, we take an important step together, um, and together is the only way we can truly make progress in, in health care costs. Our members, the payers and administrators of health care in the state, um, have always believed that cost and access are inextricably linked. Uh, we continually testing new ways to align financial incentives to drive better quality outcomes uh, and avoid more costly interventions. Our members have launched collaborations with doctors and hospitals across the state to pilot new models of care through patient-centered medical homes, episodes of care arrangements, and accountable care organizations that have begun to put an emphasis on payment for quality instead of quantity uh, of care delivered. It takes a willingness to understand the needs of every stakeholder in the system and the commitment by all to make the interests of the patient, both their health and financial interests, a priority. Um, it's hard work, but more importantly and more urgent and more essential journey than ever before. This compact is an important step in that essential uh, journey. And thank you again, Governor, for your leadership and Shabnam for uh, leading us in that, uh, in that dialogue. Um, and also thank you uh, to uh, my colleagues and organizations uh, that you represent who through this compact are committed to a journey um, to the people of New Jersey that we're ready to roll up our sleeves and do the hard work it takes uh, to make health care more affordable for New Jerseyans. Thank you. Thank you, Ward. Thank you. Ward, thank you. Uh, and again, you and the folks that you represent are incredibly important partners in this uh, endeavor. So we set up, as I mentioned earlier, the so-called Governor's Office of Healthcare Affordability and Transparency. And there are many balls that Shabnam has in the air. This is not the only one, but this is clearly one of the most important, and I can say unequivocally, we would not got, have gotten to today uh, without her leadership. Please help me bring up Shabnan Sully. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Governor, always for, for your support um, and uh, for, for reading the long briefs and, and, and the long memos and, and always doing your homework but engaging uh, with us so meaningfully. Uh, and thank you everyone uh, who's joined us today. Special thank you to all of our advisory group members really for your commitment to this work and the thoughtful engagement uh, with the, this program's development over the past year. Um, the governor said earlier when we set out to develop a healthcare cost growth benchmark program, which I know is a mouthful, uh, we haven't come up with a snappy name just yet, uh, prior to the pandemic, we knew this work was important and work we needed to do for New Jersey. 
As a result of the impact in our experiences through the pandemic on the lives of so many, our resolve for this work has only strengthened. Uh, as we recognize that access to quality and more affordable health care is paramount. I want to thank our tremendous state partners, uh, especially Commissioner Karide, her chief of staff, Justin Zimmerman, uh, her broader team um, our, uh, fr from the Department of Banking and Insurance, Acting Commissioner Sarah Edelman um, of Human Services, our state treasurer, Treasurer Moyo, uh, Commissioner Persa Kelly of the Department of Health, uh, and Acting Commissioner, uh, Acting Director, uh, Sean Neefsi from the Division of Consumer Affairs, the commitment um, and engagement we have across the administration I know will be key to the success of this program. Thank you all for, for your leadership um, and for bringing your voice to the table on behalf of all New Jerseyans. We are also very grateful to be part of the Peterson Milbank Program for Sustainable Healthcare Costs uh, and our partnership uh, on this work with healthcare experts from the Rucker Center for State Health Policy and Bail at Health. Uh, you've heard from a lot of folks before me that today is a really exciting day for New Jersey. New Jersey is taking a forward-thinking uh, forward approach that sets us on the path toward a more comprehensive approach to healthcare affordability work in our state for the first time or the first time in a very long time. We are also establishing concrete goals to mitigate the unsustainable rate of growth we have seen in the past. And really, this is about how we create a more sustainable healthcare uh, future and system for New Jersey for many years to come beyond, beyond us. We are building upon a real strong body of, of progress we have made um, across programs across, uh, over the last four years, um, but with the recognition, like the governor said earlier, that we know New Jersey residents deserve and need more action in this space. More broadly, today represents a commitment by the state um, and our healthcare leaders and all of you uh, to take real impactful steps to make New Jersey a more healthcare, uh, to make healthcare more affordable for all New Jerseyans. As we look forward to the work ahead of us, I know the governor and our entire administration are guided by the need to achieve, to achieve real progress for our families, neighbors, businesses, and more. There are a lot of statistics and quick facts I could rattle off about high health care prices, and I probably have in our advisory group meetings, uh, but I won't right now because I am certain that many of us, if not each of us in this room, personally know someone in our lives who has worried about the high cost of health care, and maybe that, worry has, um, maybe that worry has caused them to even decline or delay treatment out of fear of the cost. I know I know some of those people in my life, and I was actually one of those people several times during early adulthood. We know that the COVID-19 pandemic has only increased the pressures on families, on businesses, uh, to be able to afford the kind of care that we all know and want for our families, neighbors, and, and more. Uh, so there's significant work uh, ahead of us and hopefully innovative solutions, and we know difficult conversations. I'm so humbled by the leadership shown by members of, of this advisory group um, who has hospitals and healthcare providers, health plans, businesses, labor leaders, and community and policy advocates are committing to work together to make health care for all New Jerseyans in our state more affordable. So thank you for joining us today, and I, I look forward to the work ahead. Thank you, thank you Shabnam. L let me uh, close here by saying in, in sort of basic l layman's terms what I think this is about and why this is so special. And let me acknowledge for a second that we're in an unusual period of inflation that I think all of us hope is transitory, but it certainly is real. Uh, and whether that's the cost of gasoline or you name it, supply chain interruptions, labor market interruptions, uh, it is real. But if, if we predate this recent period for several decades, uh, for the most part, always exceptions, you're a family, you're at your kitchen table, you're talking about what you're going to go out and buy that next day. A gallon of milk, a loaf of bread, school books, uh, tuition for the community college. Um, we all know what the examples are. How fast is the economy rising uh, more generally on average? You get pretty much, and there are exceptions, energy is an exception, which is very volatile, 
you get year to year increases typically in a normal period of somewhere around two to three percent and all those things I just mentioned. You expect that next year, you may not like it, but next year you're going to have to pay a little bit more for that loaf of bread than you paid this year. The big outlier over the past several decades is the cost of health care. And so what we're celebrating and announcing today, and by the way, you could have done this with government coming in and hitting people over the head, uh, but what we're announcing today is a compact signed by a whole lot of interests who have agreed to first of all understand the data and the drivers of this cost, because there's a lot of speculation out there, but I think we owe it to ourselves to get under the hood and know exactly where these cost drivers are, and then to basically pinky swear that we're going to make the cost of health care and the increases associated with it look a lot more like a typical increase in a gallon of milk or a loaf of bread. That's what this is about. And so I salute everybody both on the stage and in the audience who are here today, and not just for what you're doing today by being here, but your commitment to being members of this compact to get to that place sooner than later. Let's get the data, and then let's make the cost of health care look a lot more like the increases we expect in other elements of our daily lives. So with that, I want to thank Tony for kicking us off. Marlene, thank you to you and Judy and your colleagues. Um, Kathy, to you and your member uh, CEOs here today. Ward, likewise to you and your members. And Shabnam, especially to you for being the driving force, the animating force that's brought us to this day and will bring us to a better day ahead. Thank you all.